I'll have to take this off because um, you're not going to hear me. Right, big day today. Today I'm going to show you how to do install your own solar installation and how to do it cost efficiently and easy. But that's not the reason it's a big day. It's a big day. I'm wearing shoes just for you. And it came to the stage where I had to, to do the solar panels. I, I must admit, I was very afraid because I just saw visions of this, all my hard work going up in flames. And now that I've done it, now I realize it is not such a big deal. I'm going to show you how to do this. But before you go and buy solar panels and batteries and all that stuff, you've got to work out how much solar panels you need, how much battery power you need. So you're going to need to do a sum or two. So it is a very easy sum. All you do is you work out how many watts you need. It's 8,000 watts. Uh, divided by 12.4, 24 volt. And then divided by, and then you do that. And then that. 59 minutes and then equals pi it is easy as pi i told you plan we to do what i did as i told you the answer is pi take the pi eat the pi <laughs> And while you eat the pie, you look for a number for a reputable solar panel or battery installer. You phone him or you go to him with a van, yes, and you go show him what's in your van. And you say, okay, this is what I've got in my van. What do I need? Battery and, and panel wise. And within a minute, you've got it. No sums needed. No headaches. Easy as that, as I told you. Easy as pie. Let's talk about the solar panels and the choices there. Um, basically, there are three choices. You get the glass panel, which is long lasting, but heavy. A glass panel will easily weigh for 100 watt anything from 12 to 18 kilograms and if you times that by three or four it becomes a lot then you get these fold out panels and my view on them is that you've got to they tend to be not as efficient but i think there is merit for that i chose the the flexible lightweight panels they are quite a bit cheaper than the uh, than uh, the fold out option and the second reason being that I could put it on the roof permanently and then I have to take it out and put them back and take them out whenever I need them. So while I'm driving, it is um, charging my batteries. Batteries. Uh, I opted for normal one or two deep cycle batteries. They are underneath the seat. Both the front seats they are batteries. I need to show them, you know what the battery looks like. I chose the normal 105 deep cycle batteries, so now I go, oh, why not go lithium? Lithium costs eight times the price. Eight times the price. And I've decided that I'll look at the lithium option once these are done, and then hopefully lithium will be more affordable. Because at the moment, I can't afford it. If you can do it, go for it. Good choice. Right, then the when it's it charges in that solar panels on the roof it's got to go through a gadget before it goes to the batteries yes it goes either you can either do a pwm uh, convert pwm is the, is the older version i think you need to switch switches and stuff like that if you want to change over well i've got the mppt that is the the, the new technology they're not hectically expensive um i pay something like three hundred dollars for this i'm using the projector a solar converter and it is an australian make and i'm very happy with it and i don't have to do anything i don't have to 
touch switches or anything. This thing is very clever. This thing knows when it needs to switch over from the car charging and when it switches over from the, the solar power charging. When I plug in a, a charger from a shore power, it knows that. It just knows everything. It even knows what mood my wife's going to be in tonight. So I'm happy. I'm getting a good value for my money. Now the big question is, you've got to connect this and this is, this is where the difficult part comes in. You don't want to blow up your car. And the secret to that is fuses. Rather have too many fuses than too little. Because if you've got fuses, then you're safeguarding yourself from, a, from your vehicle shorting out somewhere and burning. And um, the other secret is run several switches. Don't have all the wires come into one place and then it goes from there to, uh, uh, to the battery. That is bad news because if something goes wrong, you don't know where they are to start searching. Well, if you've got like a switchboard, Rinda, just come and show the switchboard up there. I think the sun's going to be in the camera, but if you've got like a little switchboard up there, then you can see which one it is that died. And that switchboard has got fuses behind it as well. So everything, all the switches are fused as well. So something goes wrong and something dies i go check the fuse there and i trace it from there and i can know what's going on and while i'm here i'm going to show you the the mppt g inside the van there it is and it is all the little lights are burning and it, it knows by itself which battery it is and it is charging happily yeah it's showing at the top there it's showing it is charged 100 percent already and it's been standing in the garage for three months. When you install fuses, it must be as close as possible to the battery. I'm going to show you what, what type of fuses I'm using. Just getting real close. There you go. You open up, you can see there is a fuse. I'm using the fuses that you can see whether they are blown or not. Because you get a different type that you can't see, but it's no use. You don't know if the fuse is blown or not. So, this is the type I'm using. And I'm quite happy with that. Okay, the professor has got to do another drawing, but this time it's legit, I promise you. I have to show you in a little drawing how it all gets put together. Right, so you're going to start off with, let's say, three solar panels. I'm back home. Too much noise on the side of the road here. So I'm going to explain you how this works. All right, let's say you've got three solar panels. And you've got two auxiliary batteries. That means two extra batteries. And here's the car's own battery. Here is your little clever MPPT box and here is your inverter if you want to make 220 volt right where do you start place the panels on the roof connect the black wire of the one panel to the black wire of the middle panel take that black wire and connect it to that, that black wire Take the red wire, connect it to that red wire, connect it, that red wire to that red wire, and now you take that red wire and you go to the MPPT. And that thing will be, I have a little sticker on it that says two solar panels. And put a little fuse in here, just before you go into the MPPT. Always remember the fuses I'm gonna make the fuses like little crosses like that all right now you've got the power and now then instead of all the black wires where does that go all the black wires goes to a little bush bar like that this thing had me all confused this is a very cheapy one you get a much bigger one I've got a bigger one in the car but this is a thing that attaches to the frame and all the black wires goes there. Otherwise, you're going to sit with zillions of black wires on your battery, which is going to be a headache. That is why we've got that thing. From your, from your MPPT, okay, let's start in front. 
the car battery that is the engine running that car battery I'm gonna put the little poles on the red pole red pole red pole black 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 there you go from your car battery there goes a red wire also to the MPPT and that says it says tells you that yeah you put a the amp fuse you fuse that by the battery and from your MPPT this thing is going to charge these batteries goes to the red and the black one lets me draw that little thingy here you see that thingy it's called a bush bar That black wire that comes from there goes to the bush bar. This one's black wire goes to the bush bar. That one's black wire goes to the bush bar. Now you've got now this battery is charging, but you want this one to charge as well. What I've done is oh, and do remember a fuse just before the battery. What I've done is I've just connected a thick red cable to that battery. From that battery to this battery with a fuse. Actually there is the whole thing. Oh and from here this thing is is now converted all the electricity and is charging the batteries but you want it to go to your lights and your fridge and your little water pump and all that stuff. So there's a wire that goes out there that says auxiliary. Now that wire, red wire goes out and it goes to the little fuse box that I've showed you earlier with the toggles on. And this fuse box has got its own fuses. So you just supply power to the little fuse box and from here you go to the light, you go to the fridge, you go to the pump. There will be wires coming out here to the lights, to the fridge, and to the water pump. All with their own little fuses and all with their own um, switches. Now, how does the inverter work? The inverter is not connected to this MPPT team. The inverter is directly connected to one of these two batteries. It comes with a hell of a thick cable, a red cable. And it must be the shortest distance possible. Same here, it's got a directly onto the battery, it goes to the inverter with a hell of a thick cable. As close as possible to the battery. That thing, that MPPT thing must also be as close as possible to that battery. And from here, you just, that battery will charge from there and the inverter will run and then you just plug in a plug here. And you plug in your microwave or whatever. Have a decent sized inverter. I've got a 2000 watt inverter. That's it. If you, that's the whole setup. So how do you know if your batteries are charging or discharging or that are they full or not? You can't guess, you've got to have a measurement of some kind. I started off with a little cheap little gauge, I think they cost like five dollars, which just shows you um, how much electricity is in the battery. And then I upgraded it a bit later to the Victron one, which shows you a bit more information, it shows you that it's 100% charged, it shows you that it's now charging at 5 watt because everything's fully charged, uh, shows you that the batteries are 13.34 volts, stuff like that. So if you look carefully you'll notice that there are now 4 panels on my roof, it used to be 3. It wasn't really necessary to add another panel, but I had a connection where I could get it for, for quite a good price, so I went with that. And my other reason is I've got an electric geyser instead of a gas geyser. Those electric geysers are quite power hungry and I just wanted to make sure that my batteries are always above 70%. Well, that will, so that will last a lot longer. That's the story. I upgraded an MPPT 
converter to the 45 amp one i had a 25 amp one the 25 amp one is actually fine for what what you normally will need the 45 is just faster hi as you guys already know i've decided to up my solar system a bit by adding another 100 watt panel went to go fetch it yesterday and this is the thing i want to show you you must probably recognize this. This is the little LED holder for strip lights. Little aluminium beading. It's got two little ears. And this is the glass facing that it's got in front. So what I do is I take this off. I glue it there. Glue it there onto the roof. And now I've got a little step got a little step that I can place the panels on and put a pop rivet through here through the little eyelet silicone it there all the way up there but then I don't have to drill holes in my roof I just glue this with Sikaflex which is strong as hell onto the roof put the panel on top of it glue it with silicone and put the pop rivet through here the beauty of this system is I don't have to draw holes in my roof so it's not going to leak and this is uh, this raises the panel slightly now you ask so what? raising the panel is important there must be an air gap between the panel and your roof if you're just going to stick this straight onto the roof of silicone this thing is going to get too hot and it's just going to flunk out after a while but if you've got it slightly raised, like I've got it here, while you're driving, there's airflow coming underneath through underneath this panel. It will cool it down all the time. It will be so much more efficient. And it sort of has another function that never, nobody thinks of. Now there's a little bit of a separation between the sun and uh, your roof itself. So your car is slightly cooler on the inside because the sun needs this and not the roof directly. It gives you a bit of a barrier against the sun. In South Africa that is a big issue because it gets damn hot. I'm replacing my small projector solar controller, the MPT controller, with a bigger one. The, uh, the smaller one is 25 amp and the bigger one is now 45 amp. The 25 amp has been working fine but I want to be able to stand in the rain for days and not worry. I think it will just give me a bit of peace of mind and I know that my my batteries will always be topped up. 